morning, Brother Kevin. Brother A, good morning to you, brother. Well, we say praise the Lord and good morning to you, and uh, we thank God again for another privilege and another opportunity that he so richly blessed us and have allowed us even to come into your homes to bring unto you another word that God has given unto us. Uh, we ask your prayers, that you pray along with us and for us, that we allow God to use us and to speak through us and give us that which we stand in need of, and that when after this lesson is over with, we may have a better, a deeper understanding of the wisdom of God, the principles of God how to apply what God has given us and put into action that God may bless us, that others around may see the goodness of God and also want to be a part of that. We do honor our assistant pastor, Elder Willispoon, in his absence. We thank God for him and his family. He's out of town enjoying his family. And his little grand had his first birthday on yesterday, so they are spending time together. And it's so good for us as parents and grandparents and to do stuff like that with our children, our grandchildren, because time goes by so fast. And these are moments we can't get back once they are gone. So what we have to do is make time for them that they will appreciate and that we can instill things in their lives and principles because why wow, we spent time with them. We do on our, our my lovely wife, our first lady, Sister Christine her absence and the deacon, our deacons and our Sunday school superintendent, her assistant. We thank God for all of them being in our presence this morning. We just ask your continual prayer for our sick, for those that are shut in, you know, those that are under the weather. Again, on, uh, we didn't, I don't think we mentioned it on uh, air last week, but um, last Friday, our uh, uh, former presider, Bishop um, Groover, passed away. Bishop Gentle Groover, he passed away on uh, last Friday. And I heard and I got worried the other day that on Monday, his older son, his oldest son passed away also. And then after that, I think it was Wednesday or Thursday, his wife passed also. So we just ask your prayers for that family that the Lord will bless and keep them and strengthen them in the time of their sorrow and what they're going through. These are times like this when we allow the wisdom of God to strengthen us and keep us and carry us through difficult situations because of our own, we can't do it. But God will give us the directions, God will give us the strength and all that we need to make it through the situations that we find ourselves going through. So as we prepare to go into our lesson uh, for November the 6th, 2022, with our theme, Choosing Wisdom, Choosing Wisdom, with our topic this morning, Wisdom's Worth, Wisdom's Worth, otherwise the value of wisdom, what is the worth that rises is so important to have it. And these are some of the things that we will talk to you or try to talk to you about this morning. Our focus verse is coming from 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 24. But unto them which are called, both Jews and Greek, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. The lesson text is coming from Proverbs chapter 3, 
verses 5 through 26 and 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verses 20 through 24, excuse me, through 30. Truth about God. Godly wisdom is the most valuable asset we could ever obtain. Truth for my life. I will deepen my relationship with Jesus Christ, the source of wisdom. Our icebreaker. What is the most difficult stand you ever made for your faith? Lesson outline. Humility is required to obtain wisdom. Looking to God instead of ourselves, I will embrace humility. Wisdom's reward, benefits of wisdom. I will pursue godly wisdom. True wisdom is found only in Jesus Christ. Worldly wisdom will not save us. I will deepen my relationship with Jesus Christ, the source of wisdom. Father, it is in your precious and holy name, Lord Jesus Christ, that we come this morning to say thank you, O oh God, for another privilege, another opportunity that you have so richly blessed us and have allowed us even to come down before your people. O oh God, we ask you, O oh God, to bless our ears, our hearts, and our minds that we may receive, O oh God, this word that you have prepared for us this day. Lord, sometimes we don't understand, oh God, your instructions. We don't understand your directions. But Father, you told us to trust you. And God, if we just be obedient unto you, we can see some phenomenal things in our lives. So bless us this day, oh God, and settle us, oh Lord, that we rest in your word. That we allow you to direct us and guide us. And even when it don't make sense, and even when we don't understand it, God, we allow your words to ring out in our ears. Continue to bless and have your way this day, oh God that you may show yourself mighty in our lives, O oh God, and that we may be victorious, O oh God, in whatever things that we endeavor in, Lord, whatever things come up against us, O oh Lord, and where we may find ourselves. Bless us that we be obedient unto you, that we allow your word to guide us and direct us, O oh Lord, and that we may follow the instruction that you give us, that we may be victorious in Jesus' name. Father, I pray this prayer, and thank you for hearing us, and thank you for answering us. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As we go through this lesson again, it is about the worth of wisdom, the value of wisdom. Why does wisdom mean so much? Because there's rewards to us when we allow ourselves to follow and be instructed in the wisdom of God. Proverbs 4 and 7 says, wisdom is the principal thing, but in all like getting, we must get an understanding. In other words, we can be smart but if we don't know how to apply what we have, what good would it do us? How can we help someone else? I used to remember back in my school days when we did our mathematical problems, the teacher would always have, ask us or tell us to have our scrap paper on side that we can show the formula of how we got to the answer. A lot of times we have the answers, but we don't know how we got the answer. So what God really wants us to do to, for us to find out to get wisdom from God because wisdom, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge and the beginning of wisdom. So when we start seeking God, then we start seeking the wisdom that God wants us to have that we can be successful in this walk and successful in this life. See, not, see wisdom, there are two wisdoms. There's one from above and there's one from the world. And what we want to do as Christian people is be more concerned about the wisdom that comes from God. Oh, worldly wisdom is good. It will help us achieve things. But what it does, it helps us achieve and accomplish things on, in this life. But then when this life is over with, that's as far as it go. But the wisdom that we get from God, it will help us in this life and in the life to come. What we must do is not lean to our own understanding, but in all of our ways acknowledge God, and he will direct us in the way that he would have us to go. In the lesson, one of the things to help us understand one of the principles or one of the stories about wisdom, God wants us to share with others the, the, the wisdom, the knowledge, and the understanding that he has given to us. And when we walk in that, others may see God's greatness in our lives, may become jealous and want what we want, then we can explain and share what God has done for us. One of the stories in the Bible back in uh, the, when the Babylonians uh, overran Israel and took uh, these uh, boys of Judah into captivity, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and brother Daniel, when he took them down to Babylon, you know, the king wanted to take the, the most uh, 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 popular looking or the most healthiest looking boys out of that and transform them over into his culture and into his way. But when you have a knowledge of God, when you know who God is, and even though things may threaten your life, but when you have an experience with God and walk with God and have a relationship with God, 
you are not afraid to use the wisdom that God has given you to make a stand. Because when you use that wisdom to make a stand in the Lord Jesus Christ, it's going to change the lives of people that are around. You know the story of how Nebuchadnezzar uh, now has built this uh, uh, memorial, the statue of himself. And he told, no, before we even go that far, when he told the three, the three boys, look, uh, as the, the unit chose them out and they wanted them to eat the food from the king's table because he wanted them to be healthy and look good and strong that when he go to choose these young men that he could choose someone that looks the part. Well, the, the, the boys from, the Hebrew boys said on this wise, we will not eat the food from the king's table. It's against the instructions of God, and this is not what we're supposed to do. We're not to eat the food uh, served uh, serve to idols. But I tell you what, Mr. Eunuch, if you allow me, let us eat just the husk. Let us just eat the vegetables and the broth and stuff like that. Let us eat according to God's direction, God's wisdom, God's instruction to, the, to us. Let us eat that away. Then he says, come back and check us in the 10 days or the days that is required and see whether or not we meet the standard that the king is looking for. Well, the other boys went by the wisdom of the world, by the king's and the eunuch's instruction, but the Hebrew boys went by the instruction and the wisdom of God. And when they went that way, when, when, when the king checked them and looked at them, he was saying how much better these boys look. So there's something different about us when we allow God's wisdom, when we allow God's knowledge to show up in us. It might not be the popular way. It might not be uh, the way the world would go because what do we choose a way that is different. Because, see, when the young boys were to eat the food, you know, you might have had a group of people around them saying, why don't y'all just go ahead and follow the instructions? Go ahead and eat like everybody else is eating. Go ahead and, 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 and fall in line back if, like everybody else. But the Bible lets us know our way is not the way of the world. Our way is the way of God. So if we're going to follow God's way, we're not going to follow earthly wisdom. Just to give you a, a word of what it says, this is what the Bible says about the earthly wisdom that comes from the world. You find us in James chapter 3, starting at verse 14. He said like this, But, ye have, but if ye have bitter envy and strife in your heart, glory not, and lie not against the truth. This, this wisdom descendeth not from above, but is earthly sensual and devilish so if there's wisdom that we're using that bring division that brings a uh, 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 bitter and envy and, and anger this is not god's wisdom this is the wisdom of the world it may seem smart it may seem like you got it all together but you're bringing disturbance you're bringing confusion the bible says god is not the author of confusion so if this type of wisdom is going on and these are the things that we are suffering from this type of wisdom this is not the wisdom from above this is the wisdom from this earth. But you go to verse 15, it says, uh, verse 16, excuse me, for, for no, no, let's go into verse 17. For the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good, good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. And the fruit of the righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace. In other words, here you go again. This is the wisdom that comes from God. If you're trying to have peace and bring unity, if you are, 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 are talking pure and you are, 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 are having mercy on people, a mercy in the situation, this is the wisdom that comes from God. But a lot of times when worldly wisdom versus uh, earthly wisdom, when using godly wisdom, it, it wants to seem that we are weak. It seems that we, we know we, we are fearful, that we don't want to go uh, along with everybody else, that we are afraid. No, but godly wisdom makes us strong. Godly wisdom makes us not afraid. Again, the Hebrew boys, when they used godly wisdom and God uh, put them in the, uh, when, when uh, Nebuchadnezzar put them in the fiery furnace, the Hebrew boys with the wisdom of God said it this way. We know that God is able, O king, and he's going to deliver us out of your hands <clears throat> one way or, the, or another. It's going to be miraculous, miraculously we're going to be delivered, or even through death we are going to be delivered. With, with whichever way God decides to use, we are going to be delivered. So it shows them the wisdom of the boy that they knew who their God was. They know what God was able to do. And they're saying in the wisdom of God, whether God do it or not, we're going to still worship him because we know who he is and what he's able to do. 
So we must learn how to use wisdom. The Bible, you know, our lesson says, humility is required to obtain wisdom. <clears throat> we must humble ourselves. We must forget about ourselves, but forget about who we are, what we know, or how we think we know. And we must allow the wisdom and the knowledge of God to infiltrate and flow through our hearts and our minds. See, one of the things is, knowledge does not equal wisdom. See, I may know something, but I might not know how to apply what I know. So just because I have the, uh, 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 the understanding of it, I know how to, I know where it's supposed to go, I know what it's supposed to do and everything, but if I can't put it into action, it won't do me any good. Paul says it this way. Paul said one thing. He said, I know to do good, but I, I can't perform what I know to do. I'm always doing the evil thing. And Paul got on through the scripture. He said, oh, what wretched man that I am. Who shall deliver me from this body of death? He said, but thanks be to God through Jesus Christ who's given us the victory. God gives us victory through his word, but, not, but just having the word is not enough. We must be able to apply the word. You must be able to put the word into action to get the results that God wants us to have in the situation and the crisis that we find ourselves going through. And in this day that we're living in now and in this time, there are many people that know the scripture. In other words, they can quote the scriptures. They got the word of God. They can quote it without missing a beat. But when it comes time to apply it, that's the thing you know that's why in Revelation 3 uh, 1 and 3 says blessed the man that readeth heareth and keepeth in other words do these things that are are, are, are are given unto you that when we do these things that we are meditate on these things God will give us the victory that we stand in need of a lot of times but it don't make sense because in our natural thinking in our natural mind there are things that we need to do there how, how to prepare ourselves and we do but in preparing ourselves god in god's wisdom he says stand still because whatever you're going through the battle don't belong to you it belongs to the lord and it shows us in joshua 1 and 8 when god told joshua that moses was dead now and you uh, um as i was with him and i will be with you but don't let the the words of this law depart from your mouth keep them don't turn to the left, don't turn to the right. Meditate on them both day and night. And when we do this, God's wisdom will guide us and help us in our decision making. That's why Proverbs tells us again, lean not to your own understanding, but in all thy ways, no matter what direction we are trying to go in, uh, no matter how sensible it may seem, and how everybody may be on the bandwagon and say, this is the way you ought to go, wait on God. Get God's direction. It may seem good, but is it in God's plan for our lives? And the thing what we want to do is that whichever way we will go, we want to be in God's perfect will. There are things that look good, feel good, sound good, but it's not in the will of God for us. When it's not in God's wills for us, then we start having problems and we start having difficulties. And on one of those occasions, you remember Abraham, when he... Uh, uh, was trying, to, in so many words, through faith, trying to help God. When uh, God told him he was going to have a son, it was going to be through Sarah. But uh, Abraham, but Abraham, Abraham figured since Sarah is old now, she can't, and they de devised a way of the law that he'd go to the handmaiden and have uh, a, a baby through Haggai, and they did this. But when we deviate from God's instruction, when we deviate from God's path, when we deviate from God's wisdom, it brings chaos. It brings trouble. And you can see in Abram's life and in Sarah's life and Hagar's life, the destruction that came because they moved away from God's instructions. Uh, how uh, uh, now Sarah is, uh, is uh, jealous of Hagar and treating her wrong and treating the child wrong because now, because, uh, you know, these are the results. I'm not going the, the way that God said go. And that brings me back to Joshua again. Now it's time for them to cross Jordan. God gives them the instruction how to cross the Jordan River and how Joshua meditated on the instruction day and night, Jordan's banks are running over. And it wouldn't make sense to do or uh, to cross at this time. But God's instruction gave him the wisdom and the understanding of how to do it and how to trust God to go through difficult situations. And even taking Jericho down, God told him just to, you know, we got our strategy together. He said, but what you need to do is 
march around the walls. Don't say a word. Keep quiet and watch the instructions of God. I know it don't make sense. And when you got people on the wall ridiculing you and picking at you and saying all manner of things, but can you imagine over a million people marching around this city and not saying a word from the instructions of God? And by God's instruction, when they did the final march and when they shouted the words, how the walls came tumbling down. That's why we have to look to God instead of ourselves in, when we're trying to do our uh, 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 do our work or do what God have us to do. Let us not look to ourselves. For in um, uh, what is that? Uh, uh, let me see if I can find it real quick. I believe I might be got it in the word right here. It says Proverbs fourteen and twelve. Watch. There is a way that seemeth right to a man. In other words, our calculations and our mathematical uh, equations and stuff. It seems right. It looks right. It feels right, but it says all the ways it looks right, it feels right, but guess what? It leads to destruction. And it says in Proverbs 16 and, and in 2, all of the ways of a man are clear in his own eyesight. See, so in other words, God is saying this in Proverbs again, lean not to your own understanding in everything you attempt to do, all that you're trying to achieve and accomplish, you ought to lean to God, seek his directions, and do what God says do. Again, when David and his men went out to fight a battle, and when he came back, all the women and children were gone, that the enemy had taken them and, 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 and kidnapped them. And when David got back, David stood still, but David's men were ready to fight. They were ready to go and ready to uh, uh, avenge what, what had happened. And David stood there and David sit there. And David had to encourage himself through God's word. And David said, Lord, shall I go? And God told David, but David waited for the instructions of God. David, go and recover all. So sometimes I have been hasty. Sometimes I have been uh, wanting to do things kind of fast because it's look good. It sounds good. It seems good. You know, and, and, and um, this is the way we ought to go. But sometimes God said, no, wait. Because one of our deacons tell us all the time, God can see around the corner down the hill, in the valley, around the curve. God can see all of this. We are limited. We can't see. God, can, God sees the results of us doing what we do when we step out of his will. And God also sees the results of what we do when we stay in his will. So what we need to do is stay in God's direction, follow what God says do, and then we will achieve and accomplish those things uh, that God says. It says following the wisdom of the Lord leads to great reward. We have health when we humble ourselves and follow the will and wisdom of God, increase, increase us, giving us all we need and more. Excuse me. Peter says, grace and peace be multiplied to us through the knowledge of Jesus Christ. So the more of God we know, the more about God we know, and the more of his principles we apply to our lives, Grace and peace will be multiplied to us. Why? Because God shows us how to walk in the situations and circumstances we find ourselves going through. God tells us about the peace that we can have when we follow his instructions. God tells us that if we read in Proverbs, you know, if we read this timeless book of truth, following this book of Proverbs, it will not only, you know, it would uh, 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 give us a positive results, it have eternal significance. You know, it, 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 it blesses us and gives us guidance and gives us directions in difficult situations. It helps us distinguish between right and wrong, good and bad. These are the things that comes from wisdom. It doesn't only give us a temporary uh, ability to do things, but it gives us an eternal, you know, definition on things. So, you know, it, it, it lets us know uh, the right way, what is important, what is not important. These are the values of wisdom when we uh, uh, study God's word and get these principles in us. It's like he says, faith without works. In other words, I, I, I trust God. I know what God can do. But if I don't apply what I know, then what good will it do me? That's why God said, try me. Try me. In other words, put me to the test and see whether or not I am able to do for you the things that you are looking for. But then in 1 Corinthians 1, 25 through 30, it tells us God's wisdom 
seems foolish. God's wisdom versus man's wisdom is foolish. It said God chooses the weak things, the, 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 um, the things that seem not to be so smart or important. These are the things God uses to bring forth victory for the believer. And why is that? Because victory, the glory, it belongs to God. And in whatever we achieve, we are not to praise ourselves or pat ourselves on the back about what we have accomplished, what we have done. It's all about the glory of God because the things that we do, the things that we accomplish is only in God and through God. So that's why Peter tells us to humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God. For in due season, in due season, see that he will elevate us and, and, and bring us to the reward that he sees just for us to have. So we have to, then even the wisdom of God lets us know that when we have deviated or left the course of God, left the instruction of God, when we have done wrong, then in the wisdom of God, we must be able to learn to receive the instructions and correction from God when we're not doing that which is right. So it lets us understand wisdom, lets us understand, know that, hey, God only means good for us. God only means the best for us. And sometimes there are things that we pray for that we think is right for us, but God's wisdom does not allow us to achieve those things, does not allow us to have those things. And sometimes we think that God don't care for us. But the Bible says God will withhold no good thing from us. So if God does not allow us to have it, have it, that means it's not good for us. And we have to understand and know that God has our best interest in life. That God wants the best for us. So that's why we ought to put our trust in him. That's why we ought to rely on his word. We ought to uh, allow God's word to infiltrate our hearts and guide us in the way that he would have us to go. I want to look at Psalms uh, 19 and 7 through 14 for a minute, if you don't mind. Let's talk about wisdom again. Let's go to Psalms 19. Verses 7 through 14. Let's see what it says. And this is talking about the wisdom of God, the word of God. And this is what it is for us. They say, the law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. In other words, God's word, the wisdom of God, make us the simple-minded person that makes us wise. It's converting our souls. That you know, It's changing the ways of the way we think and do things to the ways of the God of life, to the ways of life. The statue of the Lord are right, rejoicing in the heart. The commandments of the Lord are pure, enlightening our eyes. In other words, wisdom brings enlightenment. Wisdom brings joy. Wisdom brings content. In other words, the wisdom of God, we can be in the midst of a storm. In other words, and, and because we know who God is and what God is able to do, we can apply it. We can rest when the storm is all around us. It goes on to say, the fear of the Lord is clean, enduring. Forever, the judgment of the Lord are true and are righteous and all together. More than, listen to what it says about the wisdom now, the value. Because see, see, sometimes we get our focus on the wrong things. But when we understand what God is giving us, then our thoughts will change. It says, more to, more to be desired than gold, yea, than much fine gold, sweeter also than the honey in the honeycomb. In other words, it is saying wisdom is much sweeter than honey. Wisdom is more valued than gold because gold has its place. Yes, it does. But gold can only go to a certain extent. It can only do a certain amount of stuff. And after that, it's over with. But wisdom, my mother and I used to say, when you understand by manners and stuff like that, it will take you where money can't take you. And wisdom will take us where money cannot carry us. See, uh, then it goes on to say, who can understand the the errors cleanse thou from me from my secret faults. In other words, wisdom helped me understand when I'm going wrong. When I repent to God and apply it to my life, it helps me to get clear, get clean, and get back in the right standings with God. So these are some of the benefits, you know, that wisdom will give unto us when we allow wisdom to work in our lives. I'm going to go um, again. Let's go to Proverbs. and see what wisdom is going to do for me in the Proverbs. Proverbs chapter number 
3. And let's look at 13 through 18. Let's see what it says. Watch. It says, happy is a man that findeth wisdom, and the man that getteth understanding. In other words, happy, blessed, envious. In other words, not because of what's going on. This word can describe when things are not going right, when, things, when chaos is around. This is what wisdom will apply to that person that has the wisdom of God and the knowledge of God in their lives. Even if everything is turned upside down, topsy-turvy in the world, is running back and forth like ants, you know, you, when the answers are scrambling, when the world is scrambling around, the wisdom of God to keep us settled, the wisdom of God to keep us in peace. For whom the Lord loveth, he corrected. Otherwise, even as a father, uh, let's see, let me make sure I got it right. Seven, okay, excuse me, let me I came down too far. It said, uh, be not wise in their own eyes, fear the Lord, and depart from evil. Other words, it's telling us now, don't, be, don't think you are so smart. Other words, be, don't be wise in, in my own eyes. Though I may have a little knowledge, a little understanding, but let me depart from evil and learn the ways of the Lord. And when I learn God's ways, it, says, it will be health to my navel and marrow to my bones. Other words, I'm being fed through the navel. In other words, you know, when the babies are in their mother's womb, the nutrition is going through the navel and feeding them. God's wisdom and knowledge will feed us that way, make us healthy, and give marrow to our bones. In other words, strengthen our bones. They're not, we're not so easy to break, not so easy to give up and to give in. But this is what wisdom it will do. Honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruits of thine increase. So shall our bonds be filled with plenty, and thy precious shall be bursting out with new wines. Other words, it's saying when we honor God through his instructions, we honor God through the knowledge and the wisdom of him, how he gives us increase, how he blesses us. And sometimes it's not always in money. It can be in health. It can be in, in our strength. It can be in our understanding. Those are ways of wisdom also. But it also tells us that we should be able to uh, not despise the, the chastening of the Lord. That's what it says, whom the Lord loveth, he chasteth. And yes, because he, he have the light within us. But happy is the man that findeth wisdom and the man that getteth understanding. So this is the trail to, that we're traveling, the path that God wants us to be on. That's why Paul told Timothy to study. Study God's word. And James tells us, if any man like wisdom, ask God that God gives with God, with God's not partiality. But after we ask God to give us this wisdom, give us this understanding, you know, that we learn to use what God has given unto us. Just like when it was Solomon's turn to become king. And God put the, uh, 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 the choice before Solomon. He said, Solomon, what would you have me do for you? Well, see, if we're thinking in the, in the wisdom, in the understanding of the world, we may ask for this, Lord, give me a lot of money. Lord, give me plenty of soldiers to fight my battles. Lord, give me the strength to overcome and do these different things. Lord, Lord, everything about me, everything about uh, uh, this worldly life, everything containing to the life that is here. But Solomon said, Lord, no. Lord, you chose me, Hickle Wisdom. You, you chose me to lead this people. I, I am but a child, God. I, I don't know how to go in. I don't know how to come. But Lord, I'm asking you to bless me how to lead and guide this greater people of yours. Give me the right instructions. Give me the right understanding, God. Give me your ways that I may carry out to lead this people. And I believe if I do it, Lord, according to your way and I follow your instructions, oh God, I believe the nation of Israel will be successful. We will be a blessed people. And God, we will have your approval on our lives. And the Bible says that the prayer, because Solomon didn't ask for riches, he didn't ask for all this stuff. And the Bible said the prayer pleased God. And then, I, then the Bible said, God said, Solomon, I'm going to give you everything you ask for. And because of the way you presented yourself to me, I'm going to give you what you didn't ask for. I'm, you, you're going to be the wisest man that ever lived. You're going to be the richest man that ever lived. But even though, we're well, watching now, even with the wisdom Solomon was the richest or wisest, richest and wisest man there was. But even with all the wisdom that Solomon had, he allowed himself to be 
separated from God. Because why? He didn't apply the understanding. He didn't apply the knowledge what he had. He, he allowed strange women and wives to come in and, and cause him to turn away from God, cause him to fall away from the ways of God. And, and, and Solomon said, you know, if it seems right to follow my wives, it seems right to fool, to please them. But the Bible lets us know it seems right, but the end thereof is death and destruction. So in following God's ways, in following God's wisdom, it may seem weak. Because God's ways, he says in this word, God's ways is not our ways. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are God's ways to our ways. So in other words, what we have to do when we got a relationship with God and we got an ear to hear God's word, when God speaks to us, we can learn to tell the difference whether this is God or whether it is us. And it's good that you can ask this question, Lord, is it me or is it you? Is it me or is it you? And when God lays it heavy on our heart, he will show us what he wants us to do. And what we have to do by faith and trusting God is carry out what God say do. It doesn't always feel right. And I understand it is very scary sometimes because we're looking at it with our understanding. We're looking at it from our perspective. We're looking at it from our, uh, our eyesight to see uh, how things may go. But the Ecclesiastes, let me see something real quick. I want to see what this scripture here. Uh, uh, let's see. Let's look at chapter number nine. Sixteen says. Oh, yeah, okay. Look what the Word of God says in um, uh, Ecclesiastes 9 and 16. Then said I, wisdom is better than strength. Nevertheless, the poor man's wisdom is despised, and his words are not heard. In other words, listen to, what, <laughs> l l listen to what it says. Wisdom is better than strength. But we are considered to be the poor man because of use, using God's wisdom, it is despised. It is rejected. <clears throat> it is looked down on. Because why? We feel like sometimes I have to use my strength that I can show people who I am and what I can do. In the wisdom of God, Jesus Christ didn't show his strength. He showed his humility. He showed his humbleness. He showed his submission to his father. He showed his obedience. He carried out the instructions of God and he was victorious in that. Though many may look at him and say he was not victorious. They may look at him and say he failed, but no, no, he didn't fail. He didn't fail because if he had failed, we wouldn't be where we are today. He was very victorious in his ways, in his humble ways, in his submissive ways, in carrying out the wisdom and the understanding and the knowledge of God. I, I, you know, if when you reading a lot of times in the Old Testament, things that were done, how God worked miracles through the wisdom of the prophets, when 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 they were uh, 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 wanted to drink pure water, and how you throwing a limb, uh, a tree in the water to make the water taste sweet, how you putting a piece of wood in the water to make an axe head float. This is the wisdom and understanding of God when we carry out God's ways and we carry out what don't seem right. Because man's ways are planning. It's just like, who, who was it? Je uh, Jehoshaphat, when uh, we time to fight the battle. The, the plan would be, if I was going to use my wisdom, if I was going to use my understanding, I, was, I would get my men and, my, and strategize how I'm going to fight this battle. I would set up my defense. I would deploy my soldiers to go in different areas to, the, the, uh, to fix up the weak areas of the kingdom, that when the enemy come, we can be able to defend ourselves. But the Bible lets me know that it's not by power, it's not by might, it's by my spirit, saith the Lord. So that 
the things that we do, we cannot glory in what we do. We have to give glory unto God. That's why it seems so foolish. That's why it seems so weak. Because this is about God. This is about God being glorified. And not and it's for our victory. But it's about us recognizing who we are not and what we can't do. And when he brings the letter in and, and puts it before the Lord, see, he seeks God. God tell him, get your singers together. Now, see, my wisdom you know, tell me, we're going to have to fight. These men got chariots and horses and swords and spears, and we're we going out singing? We're going out singing a song? Lord, you know, that, that the, the, you know, but, God, but, but because he knew who God was. He knew what God can do. He put that wisdom and that knowledge into action by getting the singers together and his priests together. And they went outside in the midst of a battle singing. And in their singing, the enemies turned on them own selves and started killing one another, following the wisdom of God, following the instructions of God. It leads to life. It leads to peace. It tells me that when I can trust in God, it, the storm can be raging, but I can lay down in peace and sleep in safety. Why? Because I trust in God. My worldly wisdom, yeah, it will help me achieve things in this life. It would help me uh, accomplish things in this life. But when this life is over with, my accomplishments is over with too. Because see, I want it to go beyond just what it is right here. Wisdom is a pathway of peace. And we have to be, rec we must recognize that. Wisdom doesn't bring destruction. Wisdom, wisdom doesn't bring confusion. Wisdom brings peace. And when chaos is going on, when disturbance is going on, wisdom will settle us in a place that people around us will not even understand. But we must not be afraid to apply what we know. And I know in what we know, it seems foolish. And one of the things it says, when we follow wisdom though, it, it makes us greater it will have a greater chance of leading a happier life and a healthier life when you follow wisdom. I want to be healthy. I want to have a life of peace. In other words, wisdom teaches me in disturbance I can have peace. Wisdom teaches me what to do when disturbance come. Wisdom teaches me how to control myself when everything else is in chaotic uh, proportion. Wisdom shows and teaches me how to rest in God. And it says, wisdom comes from God. Listen to what it says. Essentially, sound wisdom is wisdom so effective that it leads to success. Godly wisdom may yield different definitions of success. The earliest mention of success in scripture is found in Joshua chapter 1. We talked about Joshua. When Joshua found success in the battle when he conquered the land of Canaan. Because Joshua meditated on the word of God, if we are looking for a self-help book or volume on wisdom, we should look to the Bible. In other words, we got all the wisdom and knowledge that we, we don't need any help, self, uh, self-help books. We don't need any books to help make us wise, smarter. We do not need those books. The Bible gives us that already. All we have to do is apply ourselves to what uh, the teaching of Jesus Christ says. And it says that when we look in the New Testament, we can discover true wisdom can only come from Jesus Christ. That is the true wisdom. It only comes from God. So wherever else we go and get it and try to figure out how to apply it and how to use it, 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 it it's, it's futile. It only comes from Jesus. And one of the things is, see, worldly wisdom will not save us. It will not save us. Worldly wisdom will teach us how to maybe survive in this life, how to be successful in this life. But godly wisdom teaches us how to be successful in this life and in the life to come. Our success, successfulness in God, in his wisdom, 
does not mean the same thing in success in the world's wisdom. The world's wisdom look at success, uh, 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 success as of uh, what I've accomplished, what I've done, what I've achieved, what I've applied, what I've gathered to myself. That's success. Well, God's wisdom is success is obedience. When we are obedient unto God, we are successful. We might not look the best. We might not look popular. But Jesus want to know, did you do what I say do? The question was asked one time when Noah was preaching 100 years and Noah was uh, building the ark to save mankind, if mankind had to listen, excuse me, to what Noah was saying. Here go man's wisdom because the Bible said it, there was no large bodies of water. There was no rain because God had watered the earth from beneath with a mist. So when Noah, by the wisdom of God, is building this boat, Man's wisdom look, look at him and said, Man, what are you doing? How are you building this big old house on dry land? Where is it going? How is it going to deliver you? How is it going to save you? They ridiculed him. They laughed at him. Because they could only go by what they understood. Well, in God's wisdom, we always don't understand. We just have to be obedient. Noah kept on building and Noah kept on spreading the word that it was going to rain, but people thought he was foolish by using what God gave him to tell the people because they couldn't understand it. And, but Noah kept on working. And then the, when the flood came and, and lifted the ark away, Noah and his family were saved by following the instructions and the wisdom of God. It didn't make sense. Noah was saved following God's wisdom. The worldly wisdom that the people had caused them to be lost. And that's why I think a lot of people frowned on what we say today when it talks about salvation. Worldly wisdom will tell you, you give me your hand and give God your heart. Come and join the church. Do some good works. You'll be saved. But we're not saved by works. We're saved by faith. And the works that we do in our faith is applying what we know or what faith tells us to do by applying that to the situation that we go through. Godly wisdom says repent. Be baptized in Jesus' name. In water. Receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Speaking in tongues as the Spirit of God gives the authority to do. That's godly wisdom. And what happened is we got so many people now in, our, in their own understanding, in their own interpretation, in their own wisdom, that they say, you don't have to do this. And it's leading so many people astray. And to show you again about worldly wisdom and, 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 and about uh, 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 godly wisdom, when Jesus was talking to Nicodemus, Nicodemus had religious worldly uh, uh, wisdom. But when Jesus came and gave him the wisdom of God, how it should be for life and how it should be for success, how it is to maneuver through life uh, 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 obstacles. Nicodemus went, how can these things be? And Jesus wanted to know, well, how can you teach my people and be a ruler when you know it's not these things? So it's not so important that we be worldly or claim by their knowledge to teach God's people. We must be uh, 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 full of God's wisdom only what the Holy Ghost gives us, because the Bible says this again, God's word, God's wisdom searches the deep things, the spirit of God, the deep things, it reveals the deep things. Without God's spirit, you can't go but so deep, you can't go but so further. So it is God's wisdom that helps direct us in where we need to go, what we need to do, and how we can achieve and win what we uh, want to get. In our uh, uh, story again, It tells of a, of, of a man and his wife and, and, and how that this position or this job was offered to them. And see, everything that sounds good ain't good. Everything that looks good is not good. He had this job and from all that was said to him, he was going to be doing good benefits, money, a new start to, to, to increase, 
uh, 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 get more uh, 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 in the ministry, grow and do all these different things. He discussed it with his wife, and, and it sounds good. You know, but then the word said, wait. And we're saying, but Lord, if I wait, this opportunity may pass me by and I may never get it again. Then see, then we forget who God is. Many opportunities can pass us by by listening to God. But then when we move according to what God said move, oh, look at the benefits we're going to have for waiting on him and doing what he said do. So the man, he decided to wait. And he find himself doing the same things, same things over and over, getting in the same predicament, in the same position, and seeing that things weren't going to work out. But then after a while, when God told him to move, everything came in perspective. I mean, he, everything was great. Everything worked out. Sometimes we move prematurely and we mess things up and we're not ready for it. That's why the Bible says, wait on the Lord. Be of a good courage and he shall strengthen our hearts. That's why we, 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 we might not know why we're waiting, but we must learn to hear his voice and wait on him. That's why it says about Israel when they were being led through the wilderness, going to a place that they didn't know nothing about. They said the cloud by day and fire by night. And when the cloud moved, they move. When the cloud stands still, they stand still. That's what we have to be with God. And in the wisdom of God, when God said move, we move. And God said stand still, we stand still. And then the man uh, later on, he stayed in the will of God and he was successful. And later on, he met a couple that had something similar presented to them and he figured it sounded good. And, and they jumped and moved and rushed into it. And because God was not in the midst of it, failure and disaster came. And see, and then the man was able to see how good it was to wait on, on the Lord. Then he was able to help the other man in this situation by looking at, you know what you need to do? Repent. Repent of what you've done because we moved out of God's will. And when God sends his instructions or sends his um, uh, 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 chastisement upon us, let us not rebuke it. Let us, let us receive it and be thankful that God loves me enough not to destroy me, but to chastise me, rebuke me, and then give me the right instructions and still bring me back into the fold. That's a loving God. But see, sometimes what our wisdom do to us is cause us to misunderstand God's correction. See, worldly wisdom make us think sometimes because what God allowed to happen in our life is that God don't love me, that God don't care. And if God loved me and God cared for me, why would he allow these things to happen? But godly wisdom will let me know that, hey, God loves me. God cares for me. God is embracing me. God lets me know he loved me by the chastisement and God is correcting me that my life will be better than what it is now and God is bringing me into the fold that I may be doing the right thing that because God is concerned about my soul and God wants me to be saved. That's why it says worldly wisdom won't, won't, won't save your soul. But godly wisdom will. And this is what we're looking for. This is what we're striving for that we go back with the Lord one day. And see what happens right now, and this is why it is so important for us to be found in the Lord Jesus Christ. The way our economy is going, the way things is happening in our lives, like a recession is coming, and gas prices is going it's up, and food and stuff is going up, and some people are wondering how they're going to make it, where am I going to go, how can I do this, how can I do that? And God is saying right here, here I am. All you have to do is seek me. Come to me, and I will give you the instructions that you need to be successful in drought and when things don't look good. You remember Elijah and the widow woman uh, in the foolishness of God's instruction? When Elijah said to the woman, you make me a cake first. But, but my Lord, you know, why would that make sense? that this is all my son and I have to eat, and when we eat this, we're gonna die. What sense would it make to give this to you? Well, we're gonna say me first. If anything you left over, then you can get some, but me first. But Godly with us to know, go ahead and make the man of God a cake first. And by her instructions and putting into action what she believed or what she heard, they were able to eat throughout the drought. Again, the woman with the, with the uh, uh, little cruise of oil, and the prophet told her, borrow. It didn't make sense to go borrow empty vessels when you don't have anything to put in them. 
and to fill your house with them? And all you got is a little cruise of oil? What kind of sense does that make? See, that's why the Bible says God's wisdom will bring the smart people to naught. Make them look like nothing. See? And then and, and, and how the the the, the, the little crews fill up all the bowels of all by following God's instruction. Again, Paul on the ship in the midst of a hurricane. And Paul is saying, you know, myself, we, we're, we're going to die. I'm not looking to get out of this. But when a word came to Paul, a word from the Lord, and Paul said, I told you that it was not good for us to sail. But the sailors had worldly wisdom of the seas. The sailors had knowledge of how to maneuver the seas and what they thought was right. So uh, the Bible says that this poor man, Paul tried to give them understanding. They despised what he said because I got training, because I got technique, because I got understanding. I'm going to do what I know to do. And, and again, that way seemed right to the man, but they were about to die until they got a word from the Lord. So what we have to do is learn to open our ears and hear God's word speaking to us. How will I know God's word? by studying God's word, by spending time in God's word. He says in John, my sheep know my voice. And another, they will not follow, they will not listen to. And so we got so many, and then even if a bunch of people are talking at the same time, the sheep listen for a distinct voice of the shepherd. That's the one they're going to follow. And that's what we have to do, look into God's word. And it says in the proverb, the beginning, the fear of the Lord. Is the beginning. So if we're not trusting God, we need to start trusting Him. If we don't know Him, we need to get to know Him. And 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 and, and, and listen to me. Uh, I ain't gonna get in trouble saying it this way or not. Um, uh, hmm. Understand me when I say it this way. Understand me when I say it this way. Don't get so engrossed or wrapped up in what the preacher says. Get engrossed in what God says. See, if what the preacher said deviate from what God says, don't follow that. If the preacher's wisdom leads you away from following what the instructions of God say, don't follow that. I know we got different denominations, different doctrines, but it shouldn't be that way. We should all be in one doctrine and one denomination. What denomination? Holiness. That's, what we, that's the denomination. And the doctrine is the teachings of the Bible. And our teacher would always say, he used to say to us all the time, the word would interpret itself. All we have to do is follow the threads of the word. And it would carry us right where we need to be. How do I know? Been there, done that. And God will, it said, the wisdom of God will bring enlightenment. It will open your eyes. It will give you a clear path to walk down and everything. We say a light unto your path, a lamp unto your feet. That's the wisdom of God. That's the word of God. But we have to learn to humble ourselves, not think so much of ourselves. We must learn to give way to our, give back to ourselves and give way to God. And let God lead us. Let God direct us. You know, you know, it, right, when I don't understand your plan, God, I don't understand. God, he said, just hear my voice. Listen to my voice. God knows where he's carrying us. God knows this way. We don't know it. So in other words, we have to follow him blindly. Blindly, we mean follow him by faith. By faith. And as we learn the word, as we read the word, and we compile this word in us, now, Father, give me the understanding of how to apply it. Because that's our success. We have to be able to apply this word, to know it. You know, that's just like you got a gun. You don't know how to put the bullets in it. And you don't know how to shoot it. What good is it going to do you? You have to apply it. It tells you what to do. Yeah, like I said, when our lesson says, uh, knowledge tells me that, that, that tomato is a fruit. But wisdom tells me I don't put it in a fruit salad. So, other way, so it telling me the first rate, how, what I should do with it, how should I, how should, how should I use it. How should we use the word of God? How should we allow it to use us? 
to bring us victory. And God's word will bring us victory in every circumstance, in every situation we find ourselves going through. He may not look at it. Look, it don't stop us from being sad. It don't, see, it don't stop us from hurting. It don't stop sad situations from coming. But what the wisdom of God will do, it will teach us how to conduct ourselves in the situations we find ourselves going through. And I tell you what, it works. It really works. That's why the Bible lets us know that man should not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God, man should live by. And we must learn to how to apply it, how to apply it. You know, you know we, 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 have, we have to learn to put it into action. We have to learn to use it. And when we use it, when we show forth our faith and do it, you see, you see God showing up every time in the midst of our crisis, in the midst of our situations. We just ask you to continue to pray for us. I ask you to continue to lift Elder Willisburg and myself up in prayer that what we bring to you be a blessing unto you and an enlightenment. We may not have fancy words. <laughs> we, don't have, we don't have degrees before and after our name. Our message may seem simple, but that's all I ask for. Jesus Christ was just a simple word. We want to bring a word that you can understand, a word that you can apply, a word that won't have you walking away scratching your head trying to figure out what did they say, what were they talking about. We just want to bring you the simplicity of God's word and the fear of it. And, see, and, and you want to know about it? Read the book of Proverbs. Read it. And as you read it, because see what happens is there are some things you might can't put into action. That's when we need the Holy Ghost to help put into action the things that we need to do to be successful in this life. Father, it is in your precious name, Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you for another privilege. We thank you for another opportunity. We thank you, O oh God, for just being with us. Thank you for what was said and what we have heard this day. I ask you, O oh God, to bless now your people, O oh Lord, that we walk in the faith, in the wisdom, the knowledge, and the understanding that you've given us that it will make life more complete for us, for, for us, even though we may be going through some things right now. Continue to bless those families, oh God, that are suffering from uh, uh, sickness and disease and even from death itself. Continue to bless them, God. Let the wisdom of your word comfort them and strengthen them and keep them as they go through the times that they're facing right now. And God, let them know that you're always with them and you will never leave nor forsake them. Continue to have your way in their lives and our lives, that you may use us, God, to be blessings unto others. And God, through your word and through your wisdom, that when we step out of your word, when we're not walking where we're supposed to work, allow your wisdom to bring us back into track, God, and allow, oh God, that we allow your chastisement, oh God, to be in our lives, that we know because you love us, oh Lord. Bless and have your way this day, oh God. Continue to keep us, oh God. And those that are having church services, wherever they may, bless them, oh God. That you be in the midst of it, oh God, that they may get some enlightenment, oh God, even in what they may hear this day. Father, do it for your glory and for your honor. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and present you faultless for the presence of his glory with exceedingly joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now, henceforth, and forevermore. In Jesus' name, let all God's people say together, Amen. Again, we thank God for you. We thank you for allowing us to come in. And as our teacher would say, be God's will, and we hope it is that we see you on next week, that God will bless us to come together, that we will bring another wonderful lesson to you that God has ordained from the foundation of the world. And let us not just be a hearer of the word, but let us be doers of the word also. Until we come together again next week, may God bless you, may God keep you. For it's in God, Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We love you. God bless you.